this week. A little slight change in time for a Friday morning um, from the usual afternoon slot. Um, and we're going to talk about, um, you know, how we can encourage others. So I'm going to give you some tips on that. Um, I'll leave, as always, I will leave um, the original blog, uh, which comes out every Monday. I'll leave, uh, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. You might want to check it out, particularly for some of the questions I'm going to post. So you don't have to have a pen and paper ready. You can, um, you know, you can, you can, you can go and have a read of the blog and, and make a note of them there. So let's talk about encouragement and, you know, the actual term itself. And it's been defined as an action whereby we, you know, we give someone support. We give them confidence and we give them hope. Um, now, we can do that in many ways. Um, we can do that through words. Um, our words are very powerful, um, in fact, and they can assist and inspire people. Um, they can, we can inspire them to do something um, or to continue to do something. Um, but no amount of encouragement that, you know, that we give to others um, can really be given in a healthy way unless we encourage ourselves first. We always have to come back to ourselves. We always have to stop and think, well, how am I doing this for myself? Um, because if we're doing it for ourselves, then then that's the healthy basis. That's a healthy boundary. We're holding a healthy boundary. Um, so your first question, um, or first couple of questions I'll ask is, you know, where do I encourage myself? Where do I support, provide confidence and hope for myself through actions and words? So remember, you know, it's action, but it's also words. You know, how am I doing this? So, you know, you really have to stop and think about this one. Um, and, you know, how am I, how are we encouraging ourselves? Um, you know, and oftentimes we're very good at encouraging other people, but we fall short of encouraging ourselves. And when we're doing that, um, it, we have to kind of check, am I supporting somebody in and encouraging them? Am I encouraging them in a healthy manner? possibly not if you're not doing it for yourself first um and it can be you know quite easily rectified and that's what we're going to talk about uh this morning so some points to consider um in terms of relationships this is very important and it's very important because we want to do come at this from a healthy boundaries angle um so they can help us um if we, we stop and think about the points that I'm going to make, um, you know, we can, we can think about how these can help us reframe our relationships. Now, not just intimate relationships, not just the relationship we have, maybe if you have children um, or sibling, but with everybody. You know, if we have siblings or parents, whatever, but it's, it's all if we can reframe our thinking around our interactions and, you know, all our relationships um then we can start to understand, you know, how we impact other people, how we impa impact other people's lives, even when we don't think we're doing it. Um, so, you know, encouragement is a great relationship booster. So that's the first point I'd make here. Um, as I said, no matter what the relationship, doesn't matter if you're encouraging somebody, if you, if they see you, you know, encouraging, being encouraging, they're going to get a boost from it. And the relationship then, no matter where on that circle of trust, and I've talked about the circle of trust before, where on that circle of trust it is, it doesn't matter because the relationship will get a boost from it. So think about that. Um, go back to the definition I, I just gave you. And, you know, if you're encouraging, um, you're more likely to be a positive person to be around. And we've talked about negative vampires before and how you know people will back away from them. Um, so you're also more likely to have better confidence, self-confidence in yourself. And you're also more likely to be, you know, setting those healthy boundaries. So that, you know, people find that attractive. So when we are encouraging ourselves, when we're supporting ourselves, then, you know, we're more, we're more uh, positive to be around. We're, we, we seem to be more self-confident you know people to be around we're setting a healthy boundary as i said and then people will find you more attractive to be around so you can see where the boost would come in that kind of a relationship um so another point i would make about this is 
um, before I get onto the tips, by the way, um, you know, we have to stop and think, you know, reframe, we're reframing these relationships. So we have to stop and think if others succeed or fail, that's not on us. That's on them. Um, there's two issues around this that can, that can um, kind of, uh, we, we stumble over on this one. Firstly, we can feel threatened by other people's successes. We don't like to admit that sometimes, but it happens. You know, we can feel threatened by it. Um, and secondly, we can then take on other people's failures as our own. When in fact, they're not. Um, and I've talked about failure before and having to reframe our whole thinking about that. So do go and check out that video um, that I did on that. And it really simply isn't the case. Whether it's others, you know, succeed or fail, that's not on us. Um... And it's generally linked to how we feel about ourselves and our own self-confidence. So, again, it goes back to, are you supporting, encouraging yourself? Um, another point I'd make here about this, um, you're more inspirational than you actually think. Most of us um, don't realise how much of an impact we have on somebody and words are so powerful. Um, and we tend to dismiss how much of an impact we have on other people's lives and again we'll dismiss it more so if we don't have good self-confidence um and uh, another point i'd make here is um just like accidents and there, there's a thing if you've ever done any sort of um first aid training you'll you'll know this one just like an accident you have to watch the quiet ones the ones that are screaming and shouting aren't really the people you go to first. They're the ones that, you know, generally if somebody's screaming and shouting, you tend to know they're okay. You do tend to go and have a look and see if somebody is, is the quiet one. So you go and have a look at the quiet ones. So just because somebody doesn't seem like they need your time and a bit of encouragement, they may do. So always check the quiet ones. People can appear calm and confident on the outside. But inside, they may be questioning everything they do. Um, and the more you actually quieten down yourself, and this is about communication here, good communication skills. Um, you know, the more you get to know the person and actually stop and listen, um, you know, to what's being said, what they're saying, or maybe what's not being said, their body language. Um, you know, you'll know when they need they need encouragement you get to know the person you get to know you know they may be a bit shy um, and they may or they may just appear calm and very confident but they actually aren't and they may need encouragement and you might think oh they're great they're fine i don't need to encourage them but they do they actually do they're the very ones that actually need it um not the one that's screaming and shouting and is quite negative and need needs you constantly so trust your gut here really do hone in on your on trusting your gut and think about you know giving encouragement equally to everyone including yourself always think of including yourself on this now so let's get on to some points um notice those who encourage you and this is important um because i've talked about this before and it's in connection with um, needing a positive support system around you um, those who encourage us are actually part of that uh, positive support system and we become um, part of somebody else's positive support system when we encourage them so the first thing to actually notice is if you want to you know do this encourage people in a healthy way with healthy boundaries and you're not quite sure how to do it then notice the positive people in your life and how they operate how do they encourage you because we actually learn from those that surround us um, and show us how to do it and this isn't just for children i've talked about this for about children before kids will behave how you know how they'll they'll see how it's done they'll model the behavior of those around them um not just parents but everybody around them so look at who's around you and how they're behaving are they very negative or are you 
and and that's who you're attracting in your like life or are they part of this positive support system which means they're more positive and they're encouraging you so you know acknowledge start acknowledging these people more let them know how you appreciate everything they do for you even in a small way how they do it um you know because then we're encouraging them by doing that that showing that appreciation even thank you um really encourages them too so it's you know it's a two-way street in terms of encouragement here this is with adults in particular um so you know bringing me on to the next point is you know pay attention and listen slow down a little bit this is about good communication as well good communication involves the ability to actually and listen more okay so if you can suspend your judgment even for a few moments um you might actually be able to hear what is really being said with somebody now meditation i'm going i haven't put this in the blog but meditation is really good here for this because when you meditate it helps you to take a mental step back and you have less likely to actually engage with the other person if they're flying off the handle and, and things are you know they're being accusatory or up in your face um, or they're coming back at you and they're not actually using good communication skills um, so if you can take that step back and take that moment to suspend your own judgment um, you might hear what's actually being said and then when we can hear what's really being said we can we can offer words of encouragement rather than judgment listening is very important to somebody else it it you're not you don't even have to say the words of encouragement but what you're doing here is you're actually allowing the other person to feel heard and that's encouraging in that sense you're actually encouraging them so listening without interrupting them allow them to have their say um, it doesn't mean that you have to put up a bad behavior but they feel heard and that can be encouraging because you're taking on board they feel you've taken on board what they have to say and then you can say what you need to say whether you need to hold a boundary with that person um you can disagree with them but they still feel heard and in that sense that you know you've encouraged them it's also a great way to build rapport um, an understanding of what's actually going on here what's what you're all going through um you know and then if it is a situation where maybe you're not involved in it um but you want to be supportive towards this person you can then if you've stopped you've suspended judgment you're not rushing in to give them something um that you think they need you can actually ask them what they really need how can you support them in a real sense um because remember encouragement means supporting somebody um it can be through words or actions but you're supporting them um and in a healthy way to make it a healthy way and healthy boundary way it has to be ways in which they really need that help they really need the support so stop and this before listen before you rush in to help you don't need to have an answer sometimes for somebody they just want you to listen to them they just want to feel heard and that can be enough um you know good communication skills aren't easy they're not something we are born naturally with um very few people i think have come up um through their childhood and have learned you know to do this naturally but you can learn how to do it um and i have i've also done a video on blog on that so I, there's a link in in the original blog for this video so go and check those tips out on how to build good communication skills um the next thing it's all about speaking like watch how you speak and this isn't just about other people how do i talk to other people how do i speak to other people how do i address them um and it's not even just in their presence it could be when they're not around how am i talking about them this is also about ourselves you know even in the quiet of our own minds um if we're not encouraging ourselves um if we're not encouraging about ourselves and things we do 
then we're more likely to speak negatively about ourselves in front of other people. So we have to watch that negative self-talk um, because we can come over. And, and do you remember I said about, you know, when you're encouraging and when people feel that they can be heard and, you know, it it's important that if they, they they're also listening to how you're talking about yourself. So if if you're talking negatively, if you're thinking up here negatively about yourself, if you've got those cognitive distortions running around up here, um, you're more likely to be speaking negatively about yourself. And therefore, you're going to come off as a very negative person. You might come off as the negative vampire um, as a result. And others will find that very off-putting. I mean, just think about how you feel um, around somebody who's you know, constantly calling themselves stupid or other derogatory terms they use about themselves. It it's it's not very encouraging to be listening to things like that anyway. Um, you know, or the comparison game. I've talked about that before. Um, you know um I'm not going to go into social media and the media and that. Um but it's not very encouraging. It's not very encouraging for ourselves. So, you know, as a result, then, um, you know, we tend to be more negative about ourselves. So how can we be encouraging towards others if we're putting ourselves down, in other words? So it's important to acknowledge our own positive traits and sing our own praises just as we do for others. And that's important because when we do that, people, you know, you're coming across as more confident and a more positive person. And as I said, people find that more attractive and they want to be with you. Um, and that brings me on to the next point is, you know, praise others for their help and effort. Um, you know, try to comment when somebody helps you um, or you see that they're doing something right. It's a very effective tool, a very effective technique to use. Um, you know, even a little thing, thank you for your help. Thank you for your support on that. It's a very, you know, it's a simple thing to say. How many times do you say it? Um, it shows the other pe person that, you know, you, you've noticed them. You've noticed their effort. You've noticed, you know, that they went out of their way to help you. Or even if it is a project you're all working on together and, it, yeah, everybody has to pull their weight. And, oh, sure, it's just a job. You still should acknowledge the other people on the team um, and how, how they've done. Um, because people are more likely then to respond in a positive manner in the future. Um, and remember, it isn't about getting it right or perfect all the time. OK, and it's not about the big achievements or the big goals, you know, that they've reached either. It's about the tiny steps. It's about the progress, not perfection here. Um, so if you know somebody has done their best, then you should be praising that. Um, you should be drawing attention to, you know, what's going well, even during the course of the project or, you know, as they achieve smaller goals um, or smaller steps towards something that they've been working on and you know they're they're giving it their best. Um, then you should be encouraging them along the way and acknowledging that and drawing their attention to it and all the steps that they have taken. Um, this keeps somebody motivated. This encourages them to continue. Again, we're going back to the definition of encouragement. You're, you're just by saying it, you're encouraging them to continue to do something. Um, the other thing would be to try to acknowledge somebody. So this is if they actually do something um, for you. Maybe the you know don't as I said you know don't overlook the simple power of a, a thank you. Um, so, you know, somebody helps you with the groceries, um, somebody, you know, helps you in any small way around the house or loads of dishwasher or anything like that. Thank you. Get in the habit of saying thank you, even for compliments. You know, we're, by saying thank you to a compliment, we're encouraging the other person. We're making them feel good about themselves just as much as we feel good about getting the compliment. Um, so it is one of the simplest way to acknowledge somebody and encourage somebody, you know, thank you. A simple, you know, well done or you were great can also be encouraging. Um, it's the point here is to be genuine in your encouragement, though, to, you know, in your acknowledgement um, and explain specifically how they helped you. 
So if you can go move, you know, start by saying, if this is something you're not used to doing, you can start by saying simply thank you. But then try and move it on thank you and then for, maybe it was for loading the dishwasher. Maybe it was putting shopping in the car. Maybe it was for, you know, help with a particular part of a project. Be specific about how they helped you because that can be also key to encouraging and acknowledging. Again, you're supporting them as much as they've just supported you. Um, other ways we can acknowledge others, you know, is um, encouraging them to express how they're thinking and feeling. Um, allowing somebody time to talk about what is happening is vital, um, particularly if something's happened. Um, you know, it's important that we recognise other people's thoughts and emotions as valid in our interactions with them. So this is again about taking that mental step back and stopping and listening um, and letting somebody respond to them, to you in their own time. And that's important. Don't rush in with an answer for somebody um, or fill in an answer for somebody. Allow them time to formulate their own thoughts, their own feelings around the topic and answer for themselves. So don't interrupt somebody, in other words, and give them the answer it's not maybe it's a good solution for you but it might not be how they're thinking how they're feeling or the right solution for them so please allow people um, to um, answer for themselves and this is a way you can encourage them you're encouraging them to speak up you're encouraging them that it's okay my thoughts my feelings are as valid as everybody else and that's vital um Another way you can do it is if you're introducing somebody, um, this person could be new to your team or you could have an event you're at and this person is new and they don't really know anybody else except you at, at uh, whatever it is. Try to include something positive, positive about them. Sorry, a bit tongue tied this morning. Um, positive about them if they are um you know if they're new and you're going to introduce them or they're they're new to that particular group and you happen to know them it can be very intimidating to walk into a room um, and not know anybody and so if you're in you know introducing them try to include something interesting about them a strength or an achievement a common hobby or interest that they might have with the other person you're introducing them to um you know or maybe the other person has you know, expressed an interest in that particular hobby and inter or, you know, an interest in it. And they, they want to know more. They've never tried it, but, oh, I know just the person. And you can introduce them. Um, this can break the ice, you know, help the person feel more comfortable in this new environment. It also helps them, you know, um, make a connection with the other person. And it gives them something to talk about. Um, it shows that you have an interest in that person, even if it's only a small interest. People can be quite taken aback and say, oh, I didn't realise. In their own head, they might be saying, oh, I didn't know you knew that about me. Um, you've, it shows you've paid attention, um, that you've given them you know, time and mental time to that person as an individual. And people will find that encouraging, which is important. Again, if you know, if they're particularly if they're new uh, to a group, um, maybe if they're new to your job and you have access to the CV, there might be something on it that, you know, they have in common with somebody else in the group. Um, another way is to celebrate all the wins. Um, it doesn't have to be anything elaborate, uh, you know, but at least acknowledge. Again, this is going back to, you know, you did a great job. Uh, I'd say you're, you know, talk about what it was um, and, you know, it doesn't matter how big or how small it is, as long as, you know, what we or they have achieved. And again, you've got to go back and talk about yourself. What have I achieved lately? Small wins. Um, it's a great way to build encouragement, confidence, resilience and motivation within yourself. If you're acknowledging your own wins and small wins could be the win of the day. Um, something small what was what was the best thing about today maybe I just got through it and that was good enough um, you know think about this acknowledging and celebrating your own wins but also encouraging and you know acknowledging and celebrating even a well done can be means so much to somebody else 
um, you're letting others know that you know you've noticed this um, that their achievements are being noticed and you're praising them and you know you're thanking them maybe for their effort as well if you can do that as well if this was something in work um, or something in college or wherever it is in school if you do that in front of other people as well they can join in they can come on board they'll take their cues if you're particularly if you're a leader um in the group um they will take their cues from you and if you can you know say well done on that you did a great job thank you very much for doing it um it's a good way then for other people will come on board and they'll also add their praise to it so you know this is a good this is a good opportunity for you to encourage them um last point nearly <laughs> um it, it, it is the last point um you know don't forget the power of your smile um you know even smiling at a stranger um and i know a lot of people um have taken off their masks so you know but you have to watch that for yourself um and you know smiling at somebody can boost their day and it can also boost your you as well that's been shown um through research to you know boost our own happiness is when we we smile more um it can be you know a very powerful way to encourage somebody um we often forget how much um better we feel um when someone smiles at us you feel more friendly um you come across as being more friendly more positive and that can be infectious towards other people and we also have to remember too that if you know that smile could be the only smile that that person receives that day and that could be a much needed encouragement that they need um you know it could be a way that they get to turn their their day around so don't forget that um and then finally a reminder it all starts with you don't forget yourself Everything I've said really is a two-way street. You know, if you don't acknowledge yourself, praise yourself. Stop and listen to what you're saying to yourself. Stop and listen to what you're really thinking and feeling. And celebrate yourself. Then, you know, it's you less likely to be doing, um, to doing this in a healthy manner with other people. You're less likely to be encouraging others in a healthy way. So, I have a question for you um you might want to consider this over the week um can everybody be encouraged have you actually stopped and thought about that do you consider everybody can you actually encourage them so go back to the definition and think about the people in your life including yourself you know can everybody be encouraged or do you consider some people will never accept encouragement no matter what we do or have we just not found the right way to do it? It's a question. It's something to think about. Um, so have a think about that. Anyway, as I said, um, I will leave the uh, description below. The questions are all there in, in, in that blog. If you want to just go and pop along and check them. There's also links to all the other videos I've talked about. Go and check them out. And I will talk to you all next week. Thank you all for listening. Those that listen live. And those that watch um, here and on YouTube um, in replay, thank you very much as always for doing so. And I will talk to you all again next week.